Hey guys, welcome back. Hallie here at High Octane Cards. Reviewing today's Pennzoil 400 presented by Jiffy Lube. Really quickly, I'm going to run through the top 10. I'm not going to run through the top 10 just yet. I lied. Uh, anyway, just a quick review of the race. thought it was a pretty good race. The, the best racing came on the restarts. So after the, the initial start of the race, the competition caution lap 25, the two stage breaks, and a couple other random yellows that they had throughout the race really provided some great racing after it. There was a lot of pit strategy that went into this race. There were teams for most of the race that were on two separate pit strategies. So the guys that were always on fresher tires were starting in the back. So it made for a lot of great passing opportunities. I think they said they were running the 550 horsepower package and the they had the larger spoilers, which I don't really agree with either one of those because they do stay bunched up for quite a bit, so the first three or four laps on fresh tires looks just like a Daytona or Talladega race, so it's it's just a recipe for disaster. Didn't have a big wreck today. Only accidents. Chase Elliott had a spin mid-race down the backstretch, didn't hit anything. He did glance off of Kurt Busch's car, but uh, no serious damage to either vehicle. Eric Almarola cut down a tire about two-thirds into the race and did hit the wall, and it eventually did put him out of the race. There were only two drivers that did not finish today. Eric Almarola and Cora LaJoy apparently broke a rear end, at least that's what I got off of Racing Reference. Nothing was mentioned about it during the race, and I did not listen to the PRN broadcast. Um, there were a total of six yellows, which we talked about most of them right there, for a total of 30 laps. Average speed was 139.615 by winner Kyle Larson. And the margin of victory over second place Brad Keselowski was 3.156 seconds. And there were 27 lead changes, most of which occurred during regular racing action, not pit cycles. Because once the leader came in, most of the rest of the field would come in behind them. Only uh, Michael McDowell and Daniel Suarez really, really led a significant amount of laps through the pit cycles. Both of those guys led about a dozen laps or thereabouts. Anthony Alfredo did lead a lap. Uh, Kyle Larson did lead the most laps today, 103 laps. Denny Hamlin led second most with 47. But let's go review the top 10. Of course, we did mention briefly Kyle Larson did win. Brad Keselowski was second. Kurt or Kyle Busch was third. Denny Hamlin fourth. Ryan Blaney first top five of the year. Uh, Truex was sixth. Uh, Christopher Bell was seventh. William Byron last week's winner was eighth. Joey Logano was ninth. And... Eric Jones bringing it home with Richard Petty Motorsports car for his first top 10 of the year in 10th place. Uh, the top 10 in points took a little bit of a shuffle. Um, Chase Elliott ended up 13th after his spin. Michael McDowell, who's had a super strong start to the year, finished 17th. Kevin Harvick uh, finished 20th, just totally lost the handle of his car, didn't have a good run at all. But the points after this race are looking at Denny Hamlin leading Brad K second. Larson jumps up to third. Chase is sitting there at fourth. Christopher Bell's up to fifth. Logano is in sixth. Harvick fell from second all the way down to seventh. Truex is in eighth. McDowell fell from fourth to ninth. And Kurt Busch is in the top ten still. I believe he came in the race about sixth in points. So not too bad there. Also, this continues a kind of a trend with the winners of this year. Again, you'll find out I'm kind of a stat geek like these numbers and all this kind of thing with NASCAR. The first four winners so far now have a combined total of 11 career wins. Because this was Kyle Larson's seventh win, and the first three winners this, this year had four combined wins in their careers. But that sounds like, oh, we got this youth movement coming in. William Byron's been here a few years. Larson's been here a while. McDowell's been here a while. And then, of course, Christopher Bell, this is his second full season. Of course, he's raced trucks and he's raced Xfinity. But with those 11 career wins of the first four, first four drivers of this year that have won, they have a combined total of 740 starts. So let that number sink in. Because everybody, again, everybody's all hyped up on youth movement and everything. Kyle Larson's 28 years old. He's not, you know, everybody looks at the young guys as being 18, 19, 20, 21. Byron and Bell are in that 21, 22, 23 age group, so they're getting ready to fall out of that young gun, I'm going to put that in quotes, young gun category. And again, 740 starts, so I, I did a little bit of research, and there's only five drivers 
that had more than 740 starts and less than 11 career wins. So Sterling Marlin had 748 starts, but he only had 10 career wins. Two of those were Daytona 500s, mind you. Uh, Ken Schrader had six or 763 career starts, four wins. Two of those came in 1991, his last two wins. Um, Michael Waltrip had 784 career starts and only four wins, and of course two of those also were in Daytona 500s. Kyle Petty had 829 career starts. He did have eight wins, but his biggest win was probably the 1987 Coca-Cola 600. And if you go back and watch that race, it was a race of attrition. There's not a full-length version that I'm aware of out there. It is on YouTube. <coughs> Excuse me. And it's usually the race that starts at about lap... I think it starts about lap 235 or thereabouts. So you only get to see most of the last half of the race... And by that point, many of the top runners were already having problems. Still an interesting race to go back and watch. And our fifth driver on this list is Dave Marcus, who ended his career with 883 career starts and only five career victories. He did win the 1976 Talladega 500. That was probably his biggest victory, although he does say, I've heard him say in interviews or read in interviews where he thinks his 82 win at Richmond was his biggest because it came in his own equipment, whereas his previous four wins in NASCAR came in the Nord Kroskoff K and K Insurance Dodge. So take that as as what you may. So those first four winners, even though a lot of people are still classifying these guys as young drivers as they're early in their NASCAR careers, they're really not when you put the combined stats together, 740 combined career starts and 11 wins. And I'll break that down for you by driver just so you don't think it's all Michael McDowell. He does have 361 starts, so that's about half of them on this list. Kyle Larson has 227 starts. William Byron has 112 starts and only two wins. And, of course, Christopher Bell. I might have said Eric Jones a minute ago. I apologize, but Christopher Bell has uh, 40 career starts with two or with just one win that occurred a couple weeks ago at, on the road course at Daytona. So just some interesting numbers there that I came across. So tomorrow we're going to go ahead and open up those two packs of 2020 Absolute by Panini football cards and we'll probably go through some of the other cards that I picked up, the ones that were packaged up in the flea market finds video so we can start kind of rummaging through those and see what we end up with. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, or at least this evening's video, and then tomorrow we'll go ahead and open up those packs of cards. Did spend part of today, um, some of you may know, my wife is going to race this year at the Indianapolis Speedrome in the factory front-wheel drive class, so I will be having videos on here of her, you know, during the practice, during the races, maybe a little bit of garage area footage. Kind of really excited about that. We spent today getting her car painted up. It's just a little Honda, a Civic Accord or something, I don't know. Again, one, one of the, uh, uh, I don't want to say at lowest in a derogatory sense, but it's one of the most affordable classes that people can get their racing career started in. So we're just having fun with this, see how's, how it's going to go. Her dad and his friends have been working really hard on getting some safety features, you know, the roll cage, the seat mounted, etc., etc. So we're really looking forward to getting that started this year. Next week is the first inspection and first practices of the year. So probably have a few different videos for you guys to watch. Really looking forward to that. So thanks again for watching, guys. We're sitting right, we're just on the cusp of 1,230 subs. So let's get those numbers pushed up there. Keep those numbers crawling. Keep them, you know, moving north because that's what we like to see. And pretty soon I'll start getting um, some more information about the 1992 Max Rips. And I do have maybe another, or I should say rip, a break, first break on the channel, and got some more ideas for more breaks down the road. So thanks again for watching. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday, at least what's left of it. Not much of it because it's about 9 o'clock Eastern time. Thanks for watching, guys, and we will see you tomorrow when we start opening the Panini 2020 Absolute Football. See you tomorrow.